Today we're talking about new makeup releases over on the interwebs. I have kind of been patiently waiting for all the minis to get out of everybody's system. I hate minis. <laughs> and they're like new releases and it's just like a little pack of like 800 tiny little things that I've already tried. And I'm just like, this is not fun for me. I don't get to talk about anything new or exciting because it's all the old stuff, just smaller. I understand that they serve a purpose, but I personally hate them. Anyway, you do not have to agree with me. I'm gonna start on trend mood just until I get my giggles out, you know, about all the new stuff. And I'll talk to you very seriously about whether or not I plan on buying something and reviewing it on my channel because it's valuable information for your future. And also uh, we, will, we, might, we might goof and gaff a little bit. So let's go ahead and jump in. Let's get in Japan. Let's go ahead and jump in. Scrolly, 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 scrolly. Okay, first thing I wanna talk about here is the new Sublimage Le Tente foundation from Chanel. I already went onto the Nordstrom website and I looked at the ingredients because I was like, all right, Chanel, I have really liked a lot of your foundation products, but. Y'all are notorious for putting some chemical sunscreen in there. And so I was very cautious about that, especially because they, they typically like to use octanoxate. Anyway, I looked and this doesn't have any octanoxate in it. And it is 135 doll hairs. And I bought it for full price so that I could review it for y'all. Today, I'm actually wearing the number one de Chanel from their Ulta collection. And I love it too. I love it. So hopefully this is great. I am excited to try it. So yeah, that's that's a full honest, no goof and no gaffin, just like it looks really cool. It is in a tub, but they give you a brush. So I'm gonna try and be disciplined enough to dip the brush in, dispense the product that way, and not just like <laughs> caveman, just like spread it all over my face and you know, adulterate the entire thing with whatever bacteria I decide I'm gonna have on my hands that day. So I'm starting to really be aware of those kinds of risks in my life as I'm fighting for my life trying to get this dermatitis to go away. Benefit is coming out with, I don't even wanna edit that. You know how, it's kind of like when you pull your laundry out of the dryer and you're like, I don't wanna fold this. That's how you know that you, <laughs> that you hate that garment and you should just get rid of it. If you're not excited to fold it and wear it again, you probably don't like it that much anyway. That's how I feel about this Benefit highlighter. I'm like, once I see that in my footage, I'm not gonna wanna edit it because I don't care. I don't wanna listen to me talk about that. So that should give you some idea of how I feel about Benefit's new highlighters. All right, okay. Kylie just getting closer to something I care about. I don't know who her team is, like who, who's giving her advice or whether this is all coming from her cool little brain because I don't know if y'all remember, but before she became Kylie the internet Kylie, she is a very, very funny person. <laughs> she has a hilarious sense of humor. She's really quick-witted. And I feel like all of that kind of like tongue-in-cheek, nod, nod, wink, wink cleverness is going into her concepts right now because she's got all the money in the world. All of it. Actually, Elon Musk has the rest, but she has most of it. And she has come out now with a Wizard of Oz concept for holiday. And I just think that the imagery on this is beautiful. I think it's beautiful. I, I can't wait to see what's in it. It looks incredible. But yeah, I'm just really, I don't know. I'm just impressed with her vision, even if it doesn't always align with what I want to do. It's more exciting than ColourPop, you know? Speaking of ColourPop, ColourPop's going to be at Target, which, you know, I could be cynical all day long about, but like, that's the most intuitive collaboration I have ever heard. ColourPop at Ulta doesn't even make as much sense as ColourPop at Target. The only thing about that is that I doubt there are going to be any abilities to like live swatch, you know? T typically like drugstore sections don't leave out samples for you to actually touch and use. But if there's one thing you can say about ColourPop's formulas is that they're consistent. So if you look at a color, you're like, I pretty much know what that's gonna feel like. If it's one of their squishy ones, it's gonna be squishy. If it's one of their balmy ones, it's gonna be balmy. If it's gonna it's one the powdery ones, it's gonna be powdery. And then you just pick the color. ColourPop has that going for them. So I think that that's a match made in heaven. Am I going to be shopping it? I don't have a Target anywhere near me and I'm really not interested in paying money for ColourPop, but uh, I think that it is neat. And I think that for the price point, it makes perfect sense. Ah, if you haven't been tuned into the last few videos, yes, I got extremely excited about the Ethereal Eyeshadow Palette Anniversary Edition by Makeup by Mario. It looks like rose quartz from Aether meets 
Pearl by Wayne Goss, and it's the first one that I've seen this size from Mario that has shimmers and mattes and satins all together in one palette because he did, he did the Master Metallics and then he did the Master Mattes and I had both of them. And he did, I don't know, he's got, I have the crystal reflectors, they're fine. I don't understand what the hype was, but this, this is neat. I like this and I bought it. I bought it full price. I So as soon as it came out, I was like, add to cart. So I actually did it live in a video. So I'm actually really psyched to try this. It looks like, honestly, like my dream palette. And that would make a lot more sense if Natasha Denota had not recently named a palette my dream palette. No, this looks like Khaki's dream palette. That looks like me in a nutshell. By the way, I'm wearing Utopian Dream today, as if you couldn't tell. Like, this is the most branded glitter I've ever seen, you know? It's like, oh, I think I have a little mascara. A little mascara? A little bit of mascara. You wouldn't know. It's just galactic chaos out there. But yeah, that's very recognizably the Utopian Dream. Ooh, okay. Do I need to try Jill Stewart Beauty? Because their packaging is so pretty. It's giving Too Faced, but even more girly, bougie, Love Shack fancy. I don't know. There's just something about it that's so over the top femme that it really tempts me. Plus, it kind of looks like Fluorosis, but I don't know, man. Fluorosis, every time I've seen it actually like reviewed and swatched, it looks pretty disappointing. Like, I think that that's the main question is, does it perform? I am seeing gorgeous, gorgeous components, but am I seeing anything that like particularly appeals to me? Not, not really. That's the other thing that's kept me from buying fl from Fluorosis is that they are a Chinese company. And so their shade ranges are, they're really weird. Like the skin tones are obviously a lot lighter than, you know, the full spectrum of the <laughs> human race. And then, pretty much all of like the lip colors and the blushes and stuff are tones of pink. Like they look kind of like popsicle pink red. There's really not a lot of like desaturation or lavender or anything particularly like muddy. I'm sure that there's some kind of, you know, intuitive through line there that I'm just missing, but it just hasn't been appealing to me because I don't want to review a foundation line that has so few shades. And I also, I just, I don't find those kinds of lip colors appealing, so. Okay. I do want to talk about this new YSL Holiday Collection. It is a 10 pan eyeshadow palette that I kind of, I know that they might just be pressed that way, but it almost looks like some of them are creams. Regardless, I am interested in everything except the far right two of them. And honestly interested in so far as those colors resonate with me as something that I would wear, not anything past that. I look at them and I'm like, I own that in so many palettes because it is a color story that excites me. And I just don't feel like paying $150 for shades that I already have in so many formulas that I really like. But I think that the weird part is how obvious it is that those right two were just added on for like holiday flair, you know, it was like, oh, Santa colors. <laughs> like, I get it. I get it that we want things to look kind of special and giftable and seasonal and whatever. But I think that we always shoot ourselves in the foot with this like Christmas time means we need to wear red eye makeup thing. Cause like there are burgundies. Plenty of people can wear burgundy. Plenty of people can wear like deep plummy colors and things like that. But it's when we get into this like on the nose, Santa Claus red. Uh, I am not going to say anything completely absolute because I'm sure someone can pull it off, but it's not my first choice. And it's not an intuitive thing that I want to put on my eyes, you know, like red sparkly eyeshadow. And honestly, I want to say that this is probably one of the better, I don't know, I haven't tried YSL's eyeshadows, but I would guess that it's high quality and it's probably one of the better red sparkly holiday eyeshadows that you would come across. And I still don't trust them to do something that would like flatter my eyes, you know? I just don't trust their preparation. It's such an odd choice to me and we just keep doing it. Now, these lipsticks, okay. Woo, 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 woo. Rouge Volupte, Volupte, I sound ridiculous. Rouge Volupte, vo all right, khaki. One more time, Rouge Volupte. Shine in the shade 122, like sign me up. That color is so good. I don't own anything quite like that. It's like this deep nude 
beige with a little bit of like a rose thing to it. Oh, that's my I love it face. That's my I can taste it in my mouth face. <laughs> I know it looks like an I don't like it face, but it's like I'm trying to stop myself salivating face. It's so pretty. I fear that it would go too peach on me because it does look a little bit peach on the white skinned model, but on the medium skinned black girl, like with the freckles, it looks, I mean, it's her lip color showing through obviously, but it looks like it's got enough kind of tawniness to it to counterbalance a little bit of yellow in the undertone. And that might be why it's going a little bit orange on the girl on the bottom left is because I think she's, at least in the photo, she looks like she's like a very pale olive, which I am not. So I think that that color might be outstanding. And I've been trying to find an excuse to buy this formula, like find a color that I liked because the formula looks so yummy. It's so shiny. I am just not, I mean, yes, I like a low pigment matte, but if I really have my druthers, I always want shine and bounce on my lips. And that just looks so delicious. <laughs> it's so juicy, bouncy and healthy looking. It looks awesome. So that one I might have to do. I'm kind of loving this whole idea because I used to only like want to order like a new product if I ordered a bunch of other stuff from the brand all at once and like I would do a full face, you know? and get an idea of the whole brand for a review. I felt like that was the only way to make it worthwhile. But I feel like the videos now that I have kind of accumulated more of like a community that comes back for all of my ideas, you know, all of my wacky weird ideas, that people are most excited about my trying new makeup videos because they're not first impressions usually. It's, it's mainly me having tried a lot of things, put together a face of makeup that has a concept to it, the way that it, you know, is going to arrive at the end. But I'm go going to also be able to offer my final thoughts on the performance of the products and whether they're good by the end. So I think that that's a better way for me to buy makeup and approach buying makeup is to say like, yeah, the whole holiday collection from YSL is not something I'm willing to invest, you know, $200 in or probably even more than that. But that lipstick is something that I would be willing to invest $38 in, which is wild still. But nonetheless, I think that it is exquisite. Okay. I want to... <laughs> Lawless. Okay, if y'all don't have context on Annie Lawless, she also co-owns Soju, the juice company, and a few other things, and she is just filthy rich as far as I can tell. So I think that Lawless Beauty is almost kind of a pet project for her. It's just very like, I like wearing makeup. I'm a very pretty girl and I have a point of view and I'm going to use my beauty line to put out things that I like. You know, she puts out like plumping lip glosses. She put out blushes that are fine. Her eyeshadow formulas are a little sub fine. And the color stories are unimaginative at best, okay? I have just never particularly been thrilled with anything that I got from Lawless except probably the Forget the Filler lip gloss. It's very, very good. It's a little sticky, but it is actually extremely like juicy and sexy looking. It's a very, it's a very good lip gloss. But I also haven't been inspired to buy like 800 more of them. I have the clear and that's enough for me. So she has come out now with this winter, she calls them the one, right? There's the one, there's the little one. This one is the winter beach one eyeshadow palette. They have gone from 25 to 20 seven dollars and you know i was interested i saw a picture of her like in the new collection or whatever and i was like i wonder what the actual palette looks like this is so odd like i get the the color concept that it was being derived from but i don't want to wear any of those bottom ones on my eyes especially not that weird blue because i know what those formulas feel like they are not emollient at all and like i'm sorry that color of blue doesn't exist in anyone's skin it just doesn't. Any of y'all blue? I understand there are things as cool, such as cool skin tones, but none of y'all are blue. And so it, that being in her matte formula is going to look skippy and there's nothing else in that little mini palette that's going to be able to complement it or bridge the gap there. Like you're not gonna be able to build it to full saturation and get a local color out of it, like a blue eye look. It's going to have to be something that's like a crease shadow or like mixed with the green or something. And it just sounds like a mess. It just sounds like a mess. 
And as I'm looking at it, and I'm also just like reliving having owned two of her palettes and just knowing that like the formulas are pretty, pretty underwhelming. I was scrolling through on YouTube looking for, I don't know what I was looking for. I guess just new beauty releases, just looking at people's videos. And I came across a Jenna Freeze video for the new Natasha Denona palette, which I didn't know existed. I didn't even know that this thing came out, but it's called the Retro Glam Palette. And then underneath it in the search results was Kelly Gooch's video from eight months ago reviewing Urban Decay Wild Greens. I did not own either, I don't, obviously I don't own the Natasha Denona one and I did not own Wild Greens. I do like an Urban Decay eyeshadow formula and I know Kelly liked the green palette, the, the Wild Greens palette. I'm sorry, but like spot the difference. It looks derivative. It kind of waters down those other ideas, especially like I keep saying, knowing the formula and how underwhelming those are going to be to touch. And then you look at the models who are actually wearing eye looks from the palette and that blue might be underneath, like that might be on the bottom, but we're not seeing anywhere where it is being blended or anything. And these are not necessarily showing their luxury potential in, in the looks themselves. So yeah, I mean, even though it's only, only $27, like there's a lot better ways to spend $27 than that. It just feels so derivative and it looks like something, honestly, the package and everything looks like something that came out of an MLM. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, look, right under, literally right underneath it is the new Retro Glam palette, which does have some pinks in it, which look awesome. So it's just, I don't, not gonna buy another Natasha Nona palette for a while. I was reminded how, yes, I, you know, she makes pretty color stories, but if I had my druthers, I would not pick that formula. I can work with it, but it's not my favorite. So I'm not like in a rush to go out there and buy that. Although it is a much prettier, more complete color story because it's got these really great kind of like pewter grays in it that I feel like really complement that color story without fighting against it. And she didn't go all the way to like dusty, royal blue. And you might say, well, I mean, there are twice as many shades in that palette to be able to do that with, but I would say that Annie Lawless could have given you a lot more to work with in that little eight pan than what she did, even for that color story. All right, moving on. You'll notice in my videos, I never comment on anything Marvel because I have no idea about it. I've seen Ant-Man because it has Paul Rudd in it. And I don't even remember that except the Paul Rudd part. Uh-oh, 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 oh no. Orly the Nail Company is out for our millennial bag at the moment. They want our money and they're probably going to get it because, oh my gosh, these are, what do they call them? Nail strips. They're basically like stick on nail designs that fold over the ends of your nail. I mean, I could put them on, on top, probably on top of these, which is like that builder gel kind of stuff on top of my nails and have just like full Lisa Frank. And I am not going to rule it out. Not gonna rule it out. I think that it's fantastic. I want a rainbow Dalmatian with a paintbrush in his mouth on my fingernails. Uh, I can't even tell you like, just looking at that little puppy's face, how like the like eight year old me just is just like feeling so loved and seen and appreciated. It's just wrap me up in a trapper keeper. Wow, y'all, if I were a beauty bay shopper, like if I were just, you know, especially if I were like on their PR list or something, I would be very pumped to try this neutral palette thing that they've done. They have a 42 color palette for $25. What? They have a 16 color palette for $13 and a nine color palette for $8.50, okay? And the colors are really pretty. I like that they said neutral and they meant like neutral versions of the colors, like neutral cool tones, not like warm neutrals, you know? So it's got like some lavenders and some kind of icy blues in it and stuff in the big ones. So I don't think it's pretty cool. I don't need it, but I think it's neat. And it's like crazy affordable. Oh, okay. Simi Hayes. I am deeply offended by two things about Simi Hayes. One, their packaging is so bulky. It's so silly. There's like hardly any, it looks like there's hardly any product in there for like these big clunky soft pack. I don't know. I don't know. It just seems a little bit unnecessary to me, but maybe, you know, it's art. And also 
I am offended by the prices because they are so expensive for what they are. I love trend mood comments. They're so salty. <laughs> Manny says, I stickers for $38. No, ma'am. Yeah, so $38 for rhinestone stickers. Are you serious? Not worth $30. Looks like toy makeup in Dollar Tree. Uh, yeah, I apparently am not the only one offended by the prices. Nonetheless, I bought it. I bought all of it. <laughs> tax deductible. Yeah, no, I'm gonna tell y'all whether it's good or whether it's bull. Mom, I am the friend who jumps off the bridge. I'm the one who's going to get out there and try it and review it. And yeah, to the tune of way too much money, but I think it's all arriving today. So that will be up soon. Cause about it. I think I even bought the eye stickers. I can't resist a vibe. Okay, so Oma Beauty now has a sister brand called Oma by Sharon C and it is their affordable, and 100% recyclable, cruelty-free, and vegan, no toxic ingredients, makeup line that they are putting in Walmart and CVS. I think I kind of have to review this because I think Oma is great. I think their colors are awesome. I have been using this contour stick for so long that I've just like broken all of the lids and stuff. It's great stuff. I like their foundation for what it is. You know, it is quite a full coverage, a little bit more satin matte finish, but I liked their concealer. I think what they do is really cool because they actually formulate uh, complexion products according to the sort of like tendencies of different skin tones. So it's like, I'm probably going to be more dry skinned than someone with deep skin is. And so that's always one of the things that I've run into and like not even as an issue, but just I've noticed with black owned brands is that they tend to make foundations that are primarily for oilier skin or combination to oily skin. And so a lot of times I find myself being like, look, I have to package this within the context of like, this was not made with me in mind. And that's a very important, like good thing, you know? But I love that Oma has taken the care to try to be inclusive of everyone. And the fact that now they're trying to be inclusive and accessible for everyone, like Walmart, you're gonna be Walmart? Like that's everybody. That's the everybody store. So like, that's really cool. So we're talking about sheer lipsticks for $7.50, an eye service eyeshadow quad, $10. Bronzers are $12. Oh, it's actually a blush bronzer. Pump, it's complicated lip tint, cheek stain, oil gloss, $7 and floss gloss $7.48. Is this completely new? I'm not sure this is completely new, but it's the first I'm hearing about it and it looks awesome. So I definitely want to review this. There are no complexion products as far as I can tell so far. Let me see, bye shall follow. Oh, they follow me, aw. <sighs> Thank you, <laughs> that's so nice. They only have 19.7 thousand followers. That's so cool, aw. Okay, this looks so awesome. I definitely want to check this out. Definitely, definitely. That's so exciting. Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> On a completely different end of the price spectrum, Shuyamura is out here. <laughs> I haven't heard from Shuyamura in like, I don't even know, not recent, not since Barney's closed. I think that they were carried in Barney's and I have not seen them since. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. Just, oh, ugh, the textures. So gorgeous, they've been doing it for a long, long time. Now this is their Sailor Moon collection and like, I'm not into Sailor Moon, maybe I should be. They're very, you know, everything's very cute about it, but I'm not into like character makeup, like, you know, themed kind of things, character collabs and stuff. And I feel like that is what they've been doing a lot of lately, but I still, I really want to like find something in their line to try. There are a bunch of brands like that. Like I keep filling my cart at Surratt, but like I'm also kind of waiting for Surratt to put something out that's new so that I'm not just like randomly putting out a Surratt review that just kind of gets thrown into the annals of the algorithm for no freaking reason. Like I have to think about these kinds of things. And so I, I've just been kind of waiting to be excited about something, but there is a highlighter. Or is that an eyeshadow? I don't know, but it's like a multi-chrome that's, ooh, it's so pretty. What is that one? Okay, it's actually an eyeshadow palette. It's weird. It, <laughs> I don't know about that purple that's in that eyeshadow palette. Like, I don't mind a purple, but I don't know about that purple specifically, you know, for me at least. But, mm, those pearly eyeshadows are so pretty. I see. Okay, in the swatches, you can see that the kind of iridescent silver is in the same color family temperature zone of the actual purple, so I can see that working. That's pretty cool, actually. Those are really, really gorgeous. I wish I liked the packaging. 
because I don't, I feel nothing for Sailor Moon, but like that's a beautiful color story. Let me know if there are any other like Shiri Mirror things that have come out that y'all want me to try because I just, I am fascinated by them. Okay. <laughs> it took me a second on this. I was like, oh, why? Literally why? But it is so funny. So we're scrolling back right now into like Halloween time period. And it gives brands license to do, you know, all the holidays give them license to do something that's a little bit more, again, on the nose. But it's then how they use that opportunity, whether they use it or they abuse it. But I feel like Ofra has really, has really done the thing here. This is their green screen lip lip color. It's a long lasting liquid lipstick and it would have to be. You couldn't do a lip gloss like this because it wouldn't work. It has to be this like super, super matte, very saturated green in order to operate as a green screen. How funny because all of these high end editing softwares, but also apps and stuff like that have a green screen function that would recognize your lips and you could put anything on there you wanted. I watched Hope Scope do that on one of her videos. She's like, you know what? This dress is really terrible, but what I could do with it is use it as a green screen. And she did and it was hilarious. I'm almost tempted to do it just so that I could I could play around with it and, and just maybe make like some really funny TikToks with it or something. I don't know. It sounds neat. How do we feel about Lunar Beauty? I have honestly not kept up with Manny, but he sure is funny. And I know that there's been scandal and there's been drama and there's been all of these things, but like I'm no angel and I think that he is doing the best that he can. You know what I mean? He's out there doing the best that he can, learning, learning out in the open and Lunar Beauty seems to be thriving, especially in the face of a lot of things that um, came out around the same time from other creators that are not necessarily thriving. Yeah, I mean, his color stories are beautiful and he has, oh, this is, okay. This is a build your own palette advent calendar, basically. So it's like, it's a, it's okay, but you only get the same shades. So you open it up, um, that, I'm sorry, that's a reach. Manny, that's a reach. <laughs> It's an empty magnetic palette, 12 single shadows and different finishes, but like it's always the same colors. So it's just a palette. I'm sorry, Manny, that's not an advent calendar. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess technically it is, but there's nothing surprising about it. It's just like, here, you put it together. <laughs> It's a recipe. It's a it's a lunch that's been packed for you. I won't be picking that up. Hip dot, y'all are weird. I watched Trixie uh, unbox some hip dot stuff, and he was like, <laughs> like, what? I'm supposed to. And he thought it was cool, but like, you know, the fact that you're actually using a mold of a character to apply makeup with. He's like, you know what? I appreciate th them for doing something different, and I appreciate him for trying to find something good to say, but I think it's a little impractical. By the way, I did buy some more Trixie. I bought some stuff from a drag queen that's not from RuPaul's Drag Race. Almost didn't get that one out. And I bought some more stuff from Kimchi, I think. And I bought a palette from uh, Miss Fame, like the original palette that has like very mixed reviews. And so I am finally going to do my drag queen owned makeup video. It's not going to be drag queen makeup. It's just, like, you know, I'm not going to try and do Trixie's makeup. Although if y'all want me to, that would be a hot mess. Okay, that would, I would be so bad. But I did order the makeup because y'all have actually, a lot of y'all have followed up and be like, are you still planning on doing that video? And I honestly wasn't because I, I, it kind of like slipped my mind, but I didn't realize how many people were excited about it. So I'm going to do it. I listen. I read the comments. I care. Okay. Okay. So I'm sorry. I understand that what goes around comes around and like, you know, there's nothing new under the sun or whatever, but like Give Beauty by Gwen Stefani wants me to make a big deal and get excited about a loose glitter. Like it says, high shine, metallic finish, soft luminous shimmer, customize the intensity. Yeah, that's how glitter works. I don't understand what's new about that. <laughs> it's not in any texture that necessarily is going to like not fall out. You know what I mean? It's not like Danessa Myricks where and maybe the packaging on those little flakies is not ideal, but at least it applies all on its own. You don't have to mix it with anything. It's not gonna just fall out everywhere. This is literally just a shaky container of glitter. And they're trying to sell it to me as like some kind of innovative beauty product. And like the whole idea that it's like, you know, she's a clean beauty company. It's like clean glitter. Okay. <laughs> I don't know, man, surprise me. See, this is what I'm talking about. Kylie put out a Batman collection. 
Like, she DGAF at the moment, as far as like, I mean, she obviously cares about the quality of her stuff, but like, she's not trying to impress anybody. She's just doing what she wants to do, and I kind of, I kind of like really, really back it. Oh my god! How did I not ever see this? This is so brilliant, I have goosebumps. Again, right here in my nostalgia. Right in my nostalgia area of my, of my prefrontal cortex. Drew Barrymore of Flower Beauty has collabed with E.T. In case you've forgotten, she was in that movie. Am I, you know what? If you don't know that, I'm not even gonna say, I'm old, if you don't know that, that's on you because that movie's great. And also, if you have been watching all of those Halloween series on Netflix, Midnight Club, Midnight Mass, Haunting at Hill House, uh, Bly Manor, they all have the grown-up who played Elliot in E.T. in them. I'm gonna edit out all the long pauses so you don't know how long it took me to remember all of those names, but I think that that's neat. Anyway, this is Eight Celestial Shimmers and Stellar Metallics. So yeah, man, I, like it's hard. There are no swatches or anything, but it's really cute. I kind of wish someone would have made a bigger deal about it because that's a cool idea. Lancome is out here with Bear Brick. Okay, so essentially it's like these character figurines that these you know, contemporary artists do. Cause is like, has this fluffy skull and crossbones and then dunnies are obviously their bunnies. And there's a bunch of these different ones. And they've all like, it was back when I was in college, basically it was all these street artists started putting this stuff out. And it was probably a little bit earlier than that, but it was huge, it was huge. And it had a big influence on like my taste and the kind of art that I made. And like my, even just wanting to get really good, like um, hand control, pen control and like precision and stuff to be able to make you know street art type drawings and stuff and it's something that I worked really hard at you see it uh, all went out the window but regardless the this Lancome collab is with Bear Brick and it is these you know cute bears or whatever and it's got the Bear Brick like impressed into the lipsticks and stuff and then there's also a Clarifique double essence with all of the branding on it and a lot of people are like I don't know what this is but I love these colors and I'm very like I don't give a crap about these lipsticks I love the collectible little bear because that's the kind of stuff that I, that's the kind of stuff that I'm into, you know? So I wish that Lancome would come out with my shade again, Nui Aju. If they had, I would have bought this, but this is pretty cute. Y'all wanna know something terrible? I've never seen Shrek. We'll close out with one thing and that is the Glossier Swiss Miss Balm.com. Glossier is actually opening up a store in Brooklyn. They invited me to the opening this week, but I'm just not gonna be able to go. I, I went back and I went into the city last week and I'm not doing it again this week. It's, it's a lot, especially if you're not staying the night, but I stand by their Balm.com ideas. They're pretty much always the bomb.com. And that Swiss Miss, it's not just a really great, like dialed in Swiss Miss kind of hot cocoa smell and flavor. It is the prettiest brown. I'll have to bring it in here. I have it in my bedroom. I'll do it in another video or whatever. But like, it's a really good brown, even colored wash lip balm kind of thing. It's a beautiful color. <laughs> so if you have been thinking about it, I highly recommend trying it. It's super, super obviously nourishing and everything. It's mm, pretty much my favorite lip balm for me because it really works. I like buy them for my f family, my extended family, my friends, like it, my husband just steals them. But yeah, all of the collabs and everything, like I end up getting them just because I'm gonna use them regardless of whether they're like my absolute favorite or my least favorite, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna use them because they're all, even their worst ones are pretty good and the Swiss Miss is darn cute. And I got it in PR and they sent me this really cute like Glossier thermos with like mountains on it and then like a couple of packets of Swiss Miss. I was like, this is cute. So either way, I think that one's a win. It's really good. And it's not super fragrance. I feel like some of them are so fragrant. It's like the mango, like I just, I have to like leave the room. It's so strong. I'm either in the mood for it or I'm not. So anyway, that was discussing some new makeup releases and which ones I'm planning on actually picking up. Let me know if there are other things that y'all have seen around. I swear I have scoured the Sephora website like more times than I can even, I don't even want to admit, you know? 
because of the sale and just making sure that I'm kind of talking about everything and getting everything that I've been excited about. And there's really just nothing new on there that's like particularly thrilling to me, but I'm excited about the things that I mentioned today. And I hope y'all are too. If you enjoyed just hearing me talk about this, it's been a while since I've made a video like this, but I'll post the last one that I did. And I will post my most recent trying new makeup video because that's kind of what these end up becoming. It's like a forecast of what I'm going to review next. So hopefully you can find something that you will enjoy. I hope you liked this. Like, comment, and subscribe if you have not already. I love y'all and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.